call the uh, San Bruno uh, City Council meeting to order for our study session. Uh, roll, I see all are here. Uh, public comments for items that are not on the agenda. Anyone wishing to speak this evening? If not, why don't we move into conduct of business, conduct the study session to review the proposed 2018-19 operating and capital improvement budget. Great, thank you, city Mr. Manager. Mayor, members of the City Council. At this, our second budget study session for the 1819 Operating and Capital Improvement Budget Review. Um, we have a fairly short program for you tonight and hope to get you out, uh, uh, let's, let's say, by a quarter till. Does that work? That would be excellent. Okay. So um, what we're going to do tonight is to review in big picture the capital improvement program. Uh, Jim O'Leary will give you an overview of the uh, budget plan for the capital improvement program and for the enterprise funds and in particular those enterprise operations that are under the operation and direction of the public works department and our public works director jimmy tan will give an overview of both the public works operations budget as well as the enterprise operations budget and then because there's such a close relationship between what public works and what the enterprises do um, for their regular operations. There's such a close relationship with the uh, capital improvement program. Uh, he will give you a little bit of uh, detail and information both about projects that were completed as well as those that are planned for the coming year. And then I'll finish up if we have time with a, a few comments about the parks and facilities capital projects. So with no further delay, I'll turn it over to Mr. O'Leary. Uh, this is Public Works Night, and just wanted to put in context the general fund expenditures, which we showed you last night and broke out uh, Public Works uh, today. The admin and engineering in the general fund is $1.6 million proposed, and the Public Works streets is a total of $1.788. Um, the streets budget is actually supported in part uh, through SB1, through gas tax, so it is actually not all uh, general fund uh, expenditure as it relates to streets. Uh, just to give a quick overview, wanted to show the water and wastewater funds. I'll show, show the wastewater fund uh, next. Um, just wanted to indicate a, a couple of things. Um, anticipating a end ending fund balance in 1819 of a little over $10 million. Uh, the most important thing I wanted to point out though is, and on this slide it's misleading if you go to the actual budget, it's much more illustrative and um, interesting and fascinating almost, um, almost. Uh, the, 19, the $19 million that is shown as uh, <coughs> total CIP, the debt proceeds and the equipment, that 19.9 is a net number. And if you go to the budget, what you actually see in this net number is total anticipated capital improvement program expenditures of $26 million. And just to put that in context, in 1516, in our capital improvement budget for water was projects was $7.4 million. So the $26 million anticipated in 1819 is really an extraordinary number for San Bruno. Um, to get to the net number of $18 million, of, of the 19 with the $26 million in capital projects, there's actually, again, for the first time in 10 years, we're showing uh, proceeds from the bonds that we issued. So we're anticipating bringing in $6.6 .6 million of the total bond issuing, uh, the, the total bonds that were issued uh, for water. So uh, the 19 million is, is sort of an interesting number. Um, in wastewater, I'm sorry. Somewhere we're going to be having a breakdown, like on a chart that shows where the bond money is going where, where it's easy to tell. Like right now, by what you told us, if somebody is just looking at that chart, they're lost. So right, is, there, but is there a narrative that comes with page 14? Page 14, page 14, page 14 in the budget okay, gives it. the detail 
of that nineteen million dollars. Okay. That's for water, and then that's for water. You're, you're going to have a similar story for wastewater. Yeah, the, you can tell the page number. For that. Yeah, the four, the fourteen million for wastewater is depicted on page fifteen in the budget. So the detail that the fourteen million collapses again. The number is almost identical. The projects for um, capital projects, and you'll see. I'll, I'm, I'm going to do a listing of. Uh, CIP projects and it'll tie this 26 million but water wastewater projects are a little over 26 million and the bond proceeds in wastewater for projects is actually 13 million dollars um, so again that's depicted uh, for water and wastewater on pages 14 and 15 in the budget um, uh, here is the CIP program funding summary. Uh, you can see the carryover appropriations, the funding request, and there, uh, the top two rows, water and wastewater. You see the total project funding for 1819, uh, 26 million for both uh, water and wastewater. And then uh, the cable projects, uh, it, it actually shows uh, the fiber to the home project. Uh, streets at ten million dollars and parks and facilities there's actually a, a total of ten million dollars um, most of that is carry over nine million dollars is carry over in parks and facilities and 1.7 is new new uh, money uh, for parks and facilities um, with that I'll turn it over to Jimmy to continue the presentation on public works Great, thanks. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, the Public Works Department is the second largest department in the city and is made up of uh, administration, engineering, uh, and operations and maintenance divisions. Their overall goal of the department is to improve and complete various different CIP projects, issue encroachment permits for pub work in the public right of way, evaluate traffic calming issues, perform review in of new development projects, support other city departments, and perform maintenance and operations of the city's infrastructure to protect public's health our community and the environment. The engineering division manages the city's capital improvement program to ensure the projects are delivered cost effectively and efficiently and provides technical and construction support on projects for other city departments. The division completed numerous studies and projects this year, which is on this uh, slide. And, um, and that we, one major project that we successfully completed is the water and sewer main replacement project along San Mateo Avenue between El Camino and Angus Avenue. Uh, given the challenges of working in the city's downtown corridor, the construction impacts needed to be minimized. The project was quite complex. Uh, that included trenchless construction underneath existing storm drain box culverts, uh, as well as deep open trench excavations. The average depth of the sewer pipeline was about 15 feet deep, and at some locations uh, it was about 17 to 90, 19 feet deep. Overall, the project was completed without any major issues, given the complexity of the project, and this project will help to improve the reliability of the both water and sewer infrastructure, which will have the capacity available for future developments in the downtown corridor. And the other major project that the city completed was the effort on the appeal of the FEMA flood impacts to San Bruno. Although the outcome was not in city's favor, favor the city tried our best and went above and beyond for our residents and was able to delay FEMA from issuing the final flood maps for about three years. The division also applied for grants and was successful in securing two grants for a paving project along Huntington and San Antonio Avenues, as well as additional grant for the design and construction of a separate bicycle lane along Huntington Avenue from Centennial Way to Caltrain Station. And this project will provide a dedicated bicycle lane that connects to transit, which is part of the city's walk and bike plan. So the de delivery and completion of water and wastewater projects is still the primary goal of the engineer's vision work program uh, to replace the aging infrastructure that minimizes impa impacts to public health and the uh, environment. As for the operations and maintenance division, uh, it provides the maintenance and repair of the water, wastewater streets, and storm uh, systems. The division is also responsible for the central garage, which manages the ma and maintains the city's fleet and provides recommendations for replacement of the vehicles. The operations and maintenance staff are dedicated, um, who work hard every day to provide the critical services and programs that our community count on. For the water division, staff ensures that the city has the highest quality potable water by performing daily water sampling to ensure the water meets the state water quality regulatory requirements. Fire hydrants throughout the city are flushed every day to remove sediments in the water distribution systems. 
The division also quickly responds to water main breaks, service leaks, so that our residents and businesses would have continued water service. Since our city's infrastructure is more than 100 years old in certain locations in the city, the city experienced more water main breaks. However, staff in the water divisions are immediately, immediately on site to ensure the breaks are quickly repaired. The wastewater division performs daily cleaning and CCTV inspection of the sewer collection system, as well as performing maintenance in, of the pump stations. And staff ensures that the sewer mains are flowing by performing rotting and ro roof foaming to prevent sewer blockages and overflows. The purchase of the CCTV truck has been very beneficial for the city. Staff has been using the truck proactively you know, to investigate sewer defects locations and repair the defects as soon as it's uh, realized. Staff completed uh, 477 video inspections of the sewer pipelines and manholes and completed 107 sewer main spot repairs to maintain sewer service and minimize sanitary sewer overflows. Staff responded to only two SSOs last calendar year and was uh, four below the maximum of six allowed. For calendar year 2018, the maximum SSO limit is four, and in 2019, it will be three. And staff will continue to ensure that we stay below the allowable SSO limits in the consent decree and eventually discuss with Baykeeper on the process of terminating the agreement. The street division performs multiple duties and are called to action in, to assist with different aspects of city needs. Some of the work consists of filling potholes, completing work orders from TSBC, refreshing traffic legends, re replacing faded signs, cleaning sidewalks, and painting red curbs. Staff from the street division performs daily routine tasks to improve the aesthetics and cleanliness of the city's downtown. Staff are on site cleaning Cemetery Avenue using two-man crews um, for four hours a day starting at 6 a.m. in the morning. In addition, one staff is dedicated to using the green machine for two hours each day starting at 6 a.m. as well. Parking lots are also swept uh, using the green machine. Um, staff also coordinates with the sidewalk uh, cleaning contractor to perform the power washing of the sidewalks six times a year to remove gum and pigeon droppings. We believe all the cleaning efforts by staff has made a difference in our city's downtown. The storm division staff performs tasks to ensure the city's drain and are clean and prevent the city from flooding. Uh, the division procures and provides sandbags to residents and businesses every year during winter, cleans storm grates and trash racks, provide regular street sweeping services in some residential and commercial areas, inspect hillsides erosions during storm events, clean and drain inlets to ensure the, tra to ensure the, 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 uh, the trash loading is reduced in the storm drain systems, and also performing illegal dumping pickups. So the storm system the division has been using the CCTV trucks as well uh, to investigate the uh, storm defects. Uh, staff completed about 1,600 feet of ins inspections for the storm drain system at 23 locations and more than 1,100 feet of storm box covert was inspected at seven locations, which is a uh, substantial cost savings uh, to the city. The overall department's operating budget remains steady and uh, are some, in, in fact, lower uh, in comparison to last year's budget. Staff reviewed the budget and reduce some of the expenditures based on the current needs and the past expenses, but also ensure that the department's ongoing work program are not uh, affected. The department continues to strive to provide excellent customer service every day to our residents. And the department does have a couple of supplemental enhancement requests. The first is within the st street uh, division. In fiscal year, se fiscal year 17, 18, staff completed traffic sign condition assessment to increase the safety for, the, for pedestrian, bicyclists, and drivers. Uh, this was a proactive measure completed by staff to determine deficient traffic signs throughout the city in order to potentially avoid li liability. The assessment determined whether the signs meet the minimum level, level of retro reflectivity and legibility based on the standards published in the California Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices guidelines. And the result of the assessment audit showed that the city has a total of about 4,900 traffic signs and approximately 2,700 of those signs need to be replaced, which is about 55% of the total. So staff derived two alternatives to complete the work program. One is to use an outside contractor to complete the replacement by programming the work for the next several years. The other is to utilize city staff to complete the work. Uh, with this option, the city will purchase the materials, make the signs in-house, then replace, this, this, replace them using city staff. This alternative will require another maintenance worker staff position dedicated to the project with one existing maintenance worker uh, assisting with the installation. 
staff is currently proposing uh, to use an outside contractor to assist in installation of these signs uh, with an ongoing cost of $150,000 a year for the next about four years. Uh, the other enhancement in the street division is a one-time fence replacement and repair request of $35,000 to complete the repair and placement of damaged uh, fence sections surrounding the box, uh, pine box covert between 1st and 7th Avenues. Over time, the fence has deteriorated and the city has received complaints regarding the overall appearance of the fence and this fund will be used to complete the work. The last en enhancement is within the, the stormwater division. Over the past you know, one and a half to two years, the city, at the city council and the public request for improved and expanded services to address illegal dumping and other trash and litter issues in the community, the stormwater division staff has been assigned to regular, you know, to regular daily trash and legal dumping pickups. Illegal dumping, as the city council is fully aware, has been an ongoing issue in the city which needed to be increased uh, by in response by staff from the uh, storm division. This has resulted in the city more than doubling its previous efforts to combat, to combat the issue and to improve the cleanliness of the city. Currently, there are three staff in the stormwater division. The number of um, incidents related to illegal dumping has increased substantially. In calendar year 2016, staff picked up materials from about 406 locations. In 2017, staff responded to about 1,923 locations where the items were picked up. Currently in 2018, um, there's 791 locations were picked up up to last week. So this additional effort has reduced impact uh, uh, the, uh, and impacted the ability uh, of the stormwater division to address routine work efforts and to address necessary activities related to the new increasing clean water regulations by the Regional Water Quality Control Board. The municipal regional stormwater permit by the regional board requires cities to implement strict control measures to reduce trash loads and debris from storm uh, systems. In order to comply with the permit requirements, nearly 250 trash capture devices will be installed by the end of 2018. In addition, an additional 150 devices may be installed by 2022 uh, to meet the 100% reduction goal. This is a mandate imposed by the regional board and continuous trash capture cleaning and inspections will be required to avoid citations for violations which would, would potentially lead to um, monetary fines. Staff is requesting two additional full-time employees in the storm division to add to the existing three staff dedicated to perform the cleaning and maintenance of the trash capture devices. So this includes, concludes my presentation for the operations um, item. Should I continue to the... Um, one of two else. Oh. If there there's any, any questions? questions about operations, Jimmy is prepared to move on to uh, enterprise capital. Any questions on the operational aspect? <clears throat> so these two new workers, when it's not during the storm season, what are, what were they going to be doing? They will be um, performing illegal dumping uh, tasks, and they could potentially be helping out with the um, you know the street activities as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm only cautious because um, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about this uh, last night after the meeting was over and, and thinking of the trajectory our city is in with that we're withdrawing, we're drawing down on our reserves and we're deciding to spend more. And I know we need to improve our services, but at some point, it, it's going to catch up that two years from now, where will our reserves be? You know, we're looking one year ahead, and, and I think, um, Director O'Leary, you, you were mentioning, is it in three years where we're going to have a serious problem? So we're going in a direction that I'm not comfortable with, and these ongoing costs, they're ongoing. And when the eventual slowdown in the economy does come, it's going to be really, really bad. And I can tell you from experience, I got laid off working here in San Bruno. It was booming. We hired a third inspector. Recession came. Got the letter. After taking advantage of the home buyer program, first time home buyer, that's why I came here. Um, 
I was stuck. I don't want to see somebody else have to go through that. And I'm, I'll just say it now, going into this budget after hearing what we were talking about during our April 30th uh, budget um, study session, or rep before we, the revenue study session, um, I was thinking that we need to cut. Other cities are cutting right now. And it's not a, it's not a popular thing to say, but, but if we just keep on spending, we're kicking the can down the road. So we have to be really careful. And I want to talk to staff. I want to hear what staff thinks. In the two years plus that I've been here on the council, um, I haven't, I want to hear directly from staff at some point to see what they think. And I remember when we went through the recession before I got laid off, we had a all hands on deck meeting and a lot of the answers in, in this, in, in solving these complicated problems are, are in our staff's hands and minds. They know the work better than anybody. So I um, just want to share that with you because it's been on my mind all night and all day today. And as I keep on thinking back, like we're, we're going we're, we're to spend another million dollars that we really don't have that we're gonna withdraw from, from our reserves. So um, I'm not in a comfortable position, but uh, I guess we could talk about that more later, but I just had to get that off my chest. Just for clarification, I think you're speaking in generality about the overall budget and the enhancements, not yes. specifically no, just to the public works operation. You're absolutely right. Okay, just wanna clarify that. And I, and I do know I was also a city employee. I remember taking salary freezes, having all hands on deck meeting in this very facility under a different city manager. So, you know, I lived some of those times um, as well. But that is what this process is for, mm -hmm. is to get the, that right. information on the table and then uh, have staff be able to provide uh, to the best of their ability. The city manager, do you if, have something? If I might respond, I, and I do understand that the comments are more general. Um, Absolutely general. It, however, I, I'm, um, I'd like to provide some information specific to the director's proposals. Number one, the, the information that you're hearing through the budget study sessions that is presented in the budget in very large measure comes directly from staff. I believe that in this particular case, and, and again, I, I do understand that you're not directing your comments solely to the stormwater um, uh, supplemental request that the director has just mentioned, uh, but I feel compelled to tell you that among the supplemental requests, and you'll notice that it's for two staff, there were other situations where the directors presented uh, more than one staff positions and I as I told you last evening um, part of what I consider to be my job is to give a, a, a reality check and a um, conservative approach um, and those those other requests did not come through this one did because what the problem the problem with the stormwater enterprise is not that we have overspent it is that that enterprise is drastically, drastically underfunded. We have barely enough stormwater, dedicated stormwater tax revenue to cover minimally basic operations. We, do not, we are not funded to meet the new mandated requirements of the uh, regional uh, the NPDES, NPDES round number two. That is that we're entering that compliance program, purchase of the trash capture devices, maintenance of the trash capture devices on a regular basis. Um, and we have added a program at the city council's request that is taking a great deal of staff time to combat illegal dumping. We have a two person crew that spends approximately four hours per day, every day of the week, five days a week, picking up based on um, observations and complaints that are directed to us picking up illegally dumped items. That program has been very effective in minimizing and addressing 
the um, previous situation that we were receiving massive complaints about where the dumped materials were sitting for some period of time until our code enforcement process could determine who did it belong to and how, you know, who was responsible for picking it up. Um, we've erased all of that previous delay and difficulty in getting to clean streets. We will be mandated to address illegal dumping on a proactive basis, at least as proactively as we are doing it right now in the very near future under the new permitting requirements. Um, we're a little bit ahead of that curve based on community reaction and community complaints here in San Bruno. But it's at a fairly significant work effort and a fairly significant cost. So I, I would just add my two cents that what the director is proposing is um, a, a significant bite, um, although maintenance workers are among the least expensive, if you will, of city staff. And the work that is being performed is that which is minimally and, and not even adequately necessary to meet both the real community needs as well as the requirements that are, that are pending. Um, so I, I would just, I would just um, and, and I would actually encourage you to talk to some of the folks who are actually doing the illegal dumping permit, uh, picking up. Um, and, and maybe we can maybe we can figure out a way to to uh, provide some more tangible information to the city council. I'm sure you will um, you will hear about what a um, what a what a huge and difficult job that is. Um, so again, I would just I would just uh, confirm that uh, yes, we understand. Yes, um, we are concerned. And as we discussed on April 30th, um, the, the biggest problem that we are experiencing right now is lack of revenue for basic functions. Um, stormwater, the stormwater enterprise, I mean, we're not even touching on the capital projects that are um, waiting to be completed in order to better address the, the reality of um, stormwater issues in our community. But $600,000, unfortunately, does not go very far. Any other comments in regards to the operations? Jimmy, next division, please. All right, thanks. Um, here, just to show you some of the completed construction projects uh, that we did in the, you know, within the fiscal year 1718. Some of the pictures show, you notice on the upper right hand corner is the senior center deck. Uh, the one next to it on the left is the Masson box covert that was reconstruction that was completed. Bottom left there, it's the Cemetery Avenue construction work um, right in front of the, um, the new Isla restaurant. And then the bottom right is the, the, the restroom um, fabrication. Um, so just to show you that. Um, the next slide. So this one, I, I decided to put this up here because one of the council members asked here um, in our budget study session asked, you know, whether we were going to complete all these projects within the next you know, fiscal year. So the, uh, the status during that time is written in um, in white, right next to the uh, the project, you know, for instance, Cunningham Tank, 90% completed. So I've provided an updated, uh, you know, a status of every single project. So as you can see here, we've completed or constructed or, you know, or designed every single project that we had in a work plan. And um, and most of the, you know, the Cemetery Avenue construction has been, has been completed. The Crestmore Canyon sewer project uh, has been completed. The, the Lomita Crestmore and the, the other um, pump stations project uh, will be under construction fairly soon. So I just want to give you, a, a, you know, an idea of you know, what our work plan was and how, what we had done you know, from last fiscal year to, uh, to now. So as far as the sewer capacity projects are related, um, you know, whether or not, you know, we're, whether we're still in line to complete them, we've, you know, a little bit hard to see there, but you know, four of those projects have been completed. You know, the Olympic Pump Station, Genevan Avenue, you know, Stewart Plate, number 10, 11, Genevan Avenue, number 12, Crestmore Canyon, and Cemetery Avenue, they're all completed. The Spyglass Pump Station is currently under construction. Right now, it's about 60% uh, complete uh, construction-wise. The San Antonio Avenue, Lomita Pump Station, and Crestmore Pump Station, those will be under construction fairly soon. And then the only remaining uh, projects that we have for the capacity is the Crestwood pump station and the sewer pipelines. And then we're, we're pretty much done with our um, capacity related projects. 
So this map shows the, um, the up upcoming large-scale water and sewer main replacement project uh, near the downtown area. Uh, this infrastructure replacement in these, it's not really part of the, the sewer capacity-related projects. So these areas were selected uh, because the water uh, system in these areas had the most water main breaks in the city. The sewer pipelines are also being replaced at the same time to avoid future construction impacts. So both the avenues 1-1 and 1-2 there uh, will be bid and constructed under the same contract. And staff has been waiting for the San Mateo Avenue project to be completed first prior to um, commencing the construction of this project to minimize the impacts to the residents. Uh, so it should be going out to bid fairly soon, uh, within the next, I would say, couple of months. Um, and the next project uh, that's currently under design right now is the Avenues 1-3. This slide shows the, uh, the work program for the next fiscal year, 18-19 uh, um, design or construction projects. Design project is indicated, you know, in parentheses uh, under with the word design. All the other projects, it will be under construction. It's because they're already pretty much designed already. So um, there are a lot of work in our work program uh, for the next fiscal year. You know, pump stations uh, will be constructed, water tanks, uh, new commercial water meters, well, um, main replacements, uh, pavement work. Um, so there's streets, rehab, um, uh, inter intersection improvements, and so forth. So there's quite a lot of work um, to be done for the next uh, fiscal year. That concludes my presentation. Questions to the director? Okay. I have, I have one question. Just how, do you, how do you maintain or how do you track uh, water main or sewer main breaks? determine, you know, this particular area is getting hit a lot. We've got one over here, one over there, at some point, if your place is section. So what we've done is we have an ad address for these main locations, and then that address is brought into our GIS um, okay. system. From there, we create heat maps, or, uh, or it, it geocodes back to the, the parcel, the address parcel in the GIS layer, and it provides us with little dots, locations, so we can, we can tell. That's where this is coming from, this is based yes. on that. Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay. Next. Oh, Amy. Well, I just, I, I just want to compliment you and your crew. That's an impressive list of accomplishments and an impressive list of projects going forward. It, it's amazing. I remember when we started, now I'm going to show my age, when I started 22 years ago here in the council, um, we barely had anything going on. We didn't have a five-year plan. We didn't have anything for anything. And to see all this happening is really a tremendous accomplishment for everybody. Thank you. It's actually, uh, that's a, a nice segue to the uh, comment that I was going to reiterate from uh, Director O'Leary's comments at the beginning of our session tonight regarding the bond financing. And I just, again, express appreciation to the City Council for your foresight in understanding and providing for that funding, which essentially advances or makes available at an earlier stage in the program the necessary funds to undertake it, it, this level of an aggressive and massive capital program in our water and wastewater enterprises. $26 million in each, number one, would not have been possible without the bond financing and frankly wouldn't be possible without the dedication and then the initiative of the, of the staff that's running just a tremendous volume of projects, as I think uh, Director Tian has, has aptly pointed out. Um, I'm just uh, going to finish up the presentation tonight on the capital budget by highlighting just a few not really terribly interesting or important projects, um, but uh, these projects are new to the capital budget this year, so we try and highlight projects both that have been completed as well as those that are new. Um, the, these projects uh, represent uh, new needs, uh, spy glass storm drain improvements resulted from the need to correct uh, deficiency in the storm drain system that is, has been causing flooding uh, to properties below, um, 
I think you have recently heard or you will very soon be hearing about the need to pay a liability claim related to flood damage um, that resulted in, in this particular area from uh, the deficiency in this line. Um, Station 52 replacement, we talked a little bit about that last night and uh, one, of the, one of the key features of, of this capital improvement budget is this year is the dedication of the six million dollars recently received through the PUC from PG&E from a PG&E fine um, to pay for beginning work on replacement of Station 52, which is pictured on the slide here. Um, the, these next three projects are relatively. Um, relatively smaller projects. Um, you've seen library or police facility or uh, other facility improvement projects in the budget, in the CIP budget from time to time for year for year. Um, th these are, that's not, that the content of the what improvement is that what's new, not necessarily the fact that we've been as needed making improvements to the buildings, really just simply to keep them going. Um, in both the library facility and the police facility, there is significant work, particularly in the police department uh, building, uh, to deal with aging and uh, deteriorated HVAC systems. Not very, um, not very uh, exciting, uh, but necessary. Um, we've had a couple of pretty significant failures in the HVAC system of in the last several months at the um, police department that really does have a pretty profound impact on operations in a building that's occupied 24 hours a day. The Public Works Corporation Yard facility improvement project similarly is not all that exciting, but is one that is attempting to address an ongoing and increasing problem where we have experienced uh, the same or similar issues that residents all over our community are experiencing with the need for a fairly large number of staff to congregate at one location, park their, their personal vehicles, and then um, deploy in the, um, in the city fleet to the various job assignments. Um, we have, or I'm not sure how many people we have at the Public Works Corp Yard, 40 or 40. 50, I think. Yeah. Um, so, and, and we have uh, no dedicated parking for, for those employees. So they are increasingly um, impacted by and impacting the surrounding neighborhoods. So with, with just with plain old parked vehicles. So the, this project would dedicate uh, $50,000 to look for and to figure out and implement, uh, uh, if we can find one, a parking solution that would be less impactful to the neighborhood and to our employees. <coughs> And then lastly, um, the green infrastructure development plan. I think I'm going to have to let you speak to this, Jimmy. This is a new requirement um, that, oh, why don't you speak to it? It's a new requirement that's, um, that's, that's again mandated by the MRP to be completed by 2019. So this is to reduce the, you know, the PCB loadings from, you know, the, the, um, from the surface ground surface to treat surface water before it enters into the, the storm drain system. So you have you know, landscaping, vegetation um, um, that you design like with bow bows, with, with bioswales and stuff like that, that um, prevents you know, um, chemicals and, and stuff like that to you know, go down into the uh, drain into the storm drain system. So that's a requirement, again, another mandate. So this, every agency in, a, in the county that has to meet um, has to have this plan. In addition to that, every agency has a certain percentage that they need to meet uh, for um, to reduce the PCP loadings, you know, in, in, a, in the city as well. And the plan charts the the path to get that done correct. to meet the meet the mandated requirement. And and and, and yes, correct. And the design criteria is for these. Great. Um, so just in closing, uh, we talk about some projects that are actually really pretty exciting. First is the Recreation Center and Aquatic Center. That project is, is moving along at exactly the pace that we embarked. You'll be receiving a comprehensive report on the phase one completion with the conceptual design at your next council meeting on the 26th. Um, that is a, obviously an extremely exciting project for the future of San Bruno. 
Um, there are a couple of projects on this list represent uh, items that have been out there for a little while uh, and that we intend to move forward uh, um, to completion during the coming year. Commodore Park Dog Run improvements. Um, that, that project was shown in the prior year budget, but due to a variety of other issues and uh, uh, transition in our staffing, we um, will be placing that as a higher priority in the coming year now that we've completed the restrooms and the park pathways as um, uh, park level improvements under the guidance of the Community Services Department. Obviously, the Crestmore neighborhood reconstruction, long time coming, um, finally, finally, uh, I, I have it on good authority that we will be done. The contractor will be out of the neighborhood by the end of the year. Um, it, and even prior to that, work is rapidly progressing on replacement of the Earl Glenview Park, which will no longer be a little tot lot right next to a um, uh, failing uh, uh, wastewater pumping facility but will be or a um, valve facility but will be a new beautiful expanded and community designed park that will not only uh, uh, fit in with the newly reconstructed Crestmore neighborhood but will also be a wonderful um, lasting and positive statement of the resilience of the community and uh, a, a positive testament to the community's um, uh, continuing memories of the eight persons who tragically lost their lives. So the neighborhood is obviously very, very excited and we look forward to being able to dedicate that park um, at, the, at the end of summer, early fall. Similarly, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty unusual for a community um, and it, in most unusual uh, community like us and, uh, and certainly unprecedented in, in at least the last many decades of San Bruno's long history to be in process with two, development of two brand new parks. Uh, but that in fact is our situation and we look forward to getting the For Florida Avenue Park back on track. Um, we're completing the final design. We've completed our back and forth with the designer. The designer will be submitting the revised plans shortly and we look forward to being out to bid with that project by the end of summer. And lastly, we won't be talking tonight about Fiber to the Home, but that's obviously on your agenda for our next budget study session on Monday, June 18th. And we will, our comments are completed for tonight. We're happy to take any additional questions. If not, uh, Jimmy, uh, and to the staff that's here from Public Works, um, thank you very much. It is a lot that has been done that needs to be done, and I appreciate you, and please tell the team, and all the team, at the Corp Yard and elsewhere, uh, thank you very much. With that, uh, we'll adjourn to our 7 o'clock City Council meeting next door. <laughs>